This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello, welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. It's your weekly dose of techno lesson. Today, we're building a 60 watt point to point Wi Fi link. That's right. Yeah, you guys know I, I love Wi Fi. We've talked about, a lot about it in the past. The ISM bans, the rules for the different regulatory domains. For example, how in the United States on 2.4 gigahertz we're limited to channels 1 through 11, whereas Europe's special and they get to use 12 and 13, or Japan is really cool and they can use channel 14. Well, today I'm continuing that conversation with a fun new mesh networking project. The mission here is actually to relay the Hack5 network across town using a point-to-point 2.4 gigahertz link. And so typically when we talk about 2.4 gigahertz, we understand that your typical base station or access point, if you will, is limited to, well, one watt of power. But it's effectively 14 watts. That's because of what's known as EIRP, or equivalent isotropically radiated power. No, it's a mouthful, but basically it's the theoretical output of the radio combined with the gain of the antenna. So in the 2.4 gigahertz realm, an access point typically configured for point to multipoint, meaning it's going to serve multiple clients at once, it's limited to a 30 dBm output plus a 6 dBi gain antenna. I know, okay, so like boom, right in, we'll start talking a bunch of techie stuff. Let's go ahead and define these terms. So dBm, that is basically the power output in decibels to milliwatts. And that's the actual transmit power of the radio. Now, whereas when we talk about antennas, we talk about DBI. So DBI is actually, well, it's the decibel, decibels isotropic. Now that's the forwarding gain of the antenna. So now EIRP is what the actual transmit power of the full system, so. And I should really preface this by saying that when we have this conversation, we're talking about here in the United States with the FCC. So depending on where you are in the world, your jurisdiction, it's all going to be a little bit different, but at least here in the US, this is the way that it works. And the EIRP, uh, you know, of the transmitter system, that's the radio, and the antenna combined, it's calculated by basically just adding the output dBm plus the antenna gain in dBi. So your typical base station with a 30 dBm radio and a 6 dBi gain antenna will have a total EIRP of 36 dBm, which is one watt. Now, just as a little cheat sheet, we're gonna go ahead and get the, some common dBm to watts here because we're gonna reference those. But basically, we have our dBm here and our watts here, what we'll end up with is, say, 24 dBm is a quarter watt. Whereas, uh, say, 27 would be a half watt. Uh, then, of course, we've got 30, which is one watt. We've got 36, which is four watts. We've got, say, 39, which would be eight watts of power. We could go all the way up to 40, we've got 16. Uh, it's kind of a bell curve here. 42 would be 16. Uh, 44 would be 25. And 46 would be 40. And 48 would be 62. And finally, let's just stop here at 50, would be 100 watts. How awesome is that? Okay, so you might be thinking to yourself, this is sweet. Let me just go ahead and hook up something like a 9 dBi antenna to a radio at 30 dBm, and well, that'll give me eight watts of power. I'll be, I'll be right here at 39. 
Not quite. Okay, so the FCC rules in addition to part 15 are as such when it comes to 2.4 gigahertz here in the US. The max power output is 30 dBm or one watt right here. Okay, so your radio can't exceed this. The actual output of your transmitter stays there. Um, whereas the maximum EIRP must be 36 dBm. So that's right here, which is actually effectively four watts. So to put that in perspective, you could have a 30 dBm radio paired with a 6 dBi gain antenna to achieve that maximum 36 dBi or dBm EIRP, right? Or you could say have a 27 dBm radio or a, you know, that's a, that's a half watt radio and couple that with a 9 dBi gain and that would give you 36, again, effectively four watts. That is the limit. However, there is a fun third rule, which is actually the most interesting to us because it's an exception for fixed point to point links. So what that means is where we actually have a station to station backhaul, we can exceed that 36 dBm limitation and it works something like this. So as opposed to point to multipoint, whereas your typical access point serving like all of these different people, we can actually say, listen, if we've just got this rooftop transmitter and that rooftop transmitter, and we just need to get like a little backhaul between these two guys, we can go ahead and increase our EIRP, our effective total output by this little formula here. What it is, is for every one dBm of power uh, that we reduce from the radio, from that beginning maximum of 30, we can actually add three, dBm, uh, three dBi of gain to the antenna. So for example, if we were to lower our power output from that 30 to 29, instead of using our typical 6 dBi antenna, we could actually use a 9 dBi antenna, which would give us 38 dBm of our total EIRP, our total output put, which is actually about six watts, which is a lot better than four. Likewise, so that would be, let's see, let's go ahead and, and paint that here. I'm gonna use green for our dbms so that would be if we were using a 29 and coupling it with a 9 dbi uh, gain so this is our dbi and that would be 9 whereas 29 is our dbm or the output power of the radio and that would give us that total there of Let's go ahead and do that in black, uh, of 38 dBm. So 38, which is six watts. I mean, furthermore, we could go ahead and say, drop it down even further. We could drop it down to 27, which is actually a half watt. So at 27, we can go ahead and couple that with a 12 dBi antenna, which would give us a total of uh, 40 dBm EIRP, which is effectively 10 watts. And, and you can see how this can keep going. If, for example, we were to go ahead and drop this to 26 dBm, we could put in a 28 dBi antenna, and that's 44 dBm total, which is 25 watts. We could, in fact, go just a little bit lower. In fact, this is where I find to be the sweet spot for my particular application, and that is actually to come down here to 24 dBm output, which is a quarter watt, right? Um, and couple that with a 24 dBi antenna, which is going to give us 48 decibel dBm uh, EIRP, which is effectively 62 watts. Now, as you can imagine, you know, we've talked about this in, in the past with a, a bunch of the other Wi-Fi food stuff. This is actually pretty easy to achieve. I mean, basically in Linux, you know, uh, typically it's just a matter of setting your regulatory domain and then setting the TX power. So for example, you would, uh, you'd first do um, if config, let's say WLAN zero is our interface and would set that to down. So it would bring our radio down. We're gonna set IW reg set. That's setting our regulatory domain to, in this case, US for United States. 
And then we can use iwconfig, and then again, WLAN0 is our interface. And we can go ahead and set the TX power to, in this case, 24 dBm. And then with all of that, it's just a matter of doing an if config, WLAN0 up. So once we've brought our Wi-Fi interface up, it's going to go ahead and start transmitting at 24 dBm, and then we just plug it in with a very nice directional um, 20, 24 dBi gain antenna, and we can use that for our point-to-point -point link, legally creating a 60, decibel, or 60 watt uh, Wi-Fi link, which is fantastic. In fact, coupled that with the, uh, the Wi-Fi Pineapple Mark V, which we're gonna be using in this case, um, you know, we can actually take all of those commands here and then string those together as a boot mode using the dip switches so that whenever we have those dip switches loaded, it's going to go ahead into that mode. And what's really cool about the Mark V is since we have two distinct radios here on the same board, one of them, say our radio zero, can be set for 24 dBm and we can couple this, we can unscrew this guy and then, you know, grab ourselves here like, uh, not one of these is actually only what is this guy? This guy is four, uh, 14, right? So we would actually be able to say, I don't know, where would that be? That would be around 26, 26 and 14 would be good. But uh, even with a larger one, we can go ahead and just, you know, couple these guys together, right? And then our radio one here, we can actually leave as is at 30 because we haven't changed the antenna. We're still using the 6 dBi gain and that would be for a point to multipoint. So it would have this really nice backhaul, you know, just a point to point link going at 60 watts and then we can, you know, legally, and then we can also legally use the other um, interface here to go ahead and create our point to multipoint at a nice uh, happy 4 watts EIRP. So this is something that we're going to be getting into soon and of course I welcome your comments on this so please email feedback at hack5.org but until then let's go ahead and check out this preliminary system and then as we get more into this series we'll be adding some nodes and I can't wait to see where this goes. So again feedback at hack5.org. No I'm, I'm gonna have to call you back. Actually hang on just a second. You know, it really doesn't matter if you're a monkey in the middle or a hacker working for bananas. If you've got that killer idea, when it hits, you need to snag that domain name and the web hosting fast. With Domain.com's quick domain discovery system, it's easy to check out and have your website up and running in no time. I mean, I love Domain.com. They're affordable, reliable, they're easy to use, and they're on social media, at Domain.com on Twitter. It makes it a really fun place to do business because they're huge fans of Hack5. So they've got the hookup, get this, 15% off. They're already affordable domain names and web hosting. All you have to do is use the coupon code HACK5 at checkout. That's right, they've got the hookup, H-A-K-5. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. Yeah, no, 40 tons of bananas. We're back, and now it's time for the trivia question of the week. So last week's trivia question was, Spaceship Earth, the iconic Disney World Epcot attraction, was designed by which sci-fi writer? And the answer was Ray Bradbury. Now this week's question is, what is the name of the MIT graduate and NASA scientist who, in 1991, designed a virtual reality system to drive Mars rovers from Earth in apparent real time, despite the substantial delay of Mars-Earth-Mars -Mars signals? You can answer that at hack5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some awesome Hack 5 goodies. That just about wraps up this week's episode of Hack 5. Of course, this being the first in this big project, very excited to be start doing some mesh networking stuff. Looking forward to your feedback, so feedback at hack5.org. Of course, so follow us on all the social networks, um, hack5.org slash follow for all of the links. And um, hakshop.com to support us directly. Very excited, bunch of new announcements, so stay tuned. And um, I guess until next week, for Shannon and myself, we're reminding you to trust your techno lust.